Hey everybody, I'm Christina and I work for the Fort Worth Public Library. Today we're going to learn how to pin a beetle to display and study insects like an entomologist. Insects are fascinating and affect virtually all life on Earth, even though they're widely unappreciated. This project will take a few days, but by the end you can use your beetle as art to display. You can pick up a Maker 101 kit for free from the Fort Worth Public Library this month. They're made especially for 6th to 12th graders. This month's kit includes one sustainably sourced insect specimen, a styrofoam block, about 20 steel insect pins. These are steel so they won't rust, a relaxing chamber, a shadow box frame, and some blank taxidermy labels. You'll also need some paper towels, dishwashing liquid, a pencil, and if you can find some, it can be really helpful to use some tweezers and then if any pieces happen to break off of the beetle, you can use school glue to reattach them. Now, quick safety note, this kit contains small pieces and pokey parts. So keep track of all the pieces in your kit and stay safe. This project boils down to four steps. Relax, pin, label, display. Let's get started. Step one, relax. Find the beetle in your kit and gently unwrap it. If you try to move its legs too much at this point, they would break off because they're very dry and brittle. We're gonna place the beetle in a relaxing chamber for about a day to rehydrate it so that we can stretch it and move it around without breaking it. Wet a paper towel and wring it out a little so it's not dripping wet. Add about a cap full of dish soap and put it inside the relaxing chamber. Just to err on the side of caution, I'm gonna place the insect on this small piece of plastic so that it's not touching the dish soap directly. Snap the lid back on and come back to your project tomorrow. You'll see that when it's relaxed enough, you can move its legs around. Let's do a brief overview of insect anatomy. It has three main body parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen two antenna, six legs, a couple of hard outer wings, and sometimes it also has a pair of under wings. You'll use pins from your kit to position the legs, antenna, and wings how you want them. Then let it set for a few days. This part isn't required, but it's helpful. Specimen width data are more valuable. If scientists can study bugs for many years, we can recognize patterns over time. For example, the peppered moth was mostly white, but then it turned darker over the years because of all the pollution during the Industrial Revolution. Then years later, when they enacted clean air laws and some of the pollution went away, it turned back to white. So being able to identify insects can help us learn about climate change and environmental changes. And you can see it can be incredibly helpful to document your observations. Scientists use identification tags with key information. These taxidermic labels include the date you caught it, where you caught it, and what it is. In this case, you don't have the date or location for where it was caught, but you could try to find out what type of beetle it is. The Seek by iNaturalist app is great to help identify plants and animals. I've waited a few days and my bug is almost ready to display. I'm gonna remove all the pins and see if I can get a good picture of this beetle. So I'm gonna go into the Seek app and click on the camera and try to get a good shot of this insect. I know it's a beetle. You can see on the screen, it tells me that it's an insect for the class, beetles for the order, and true weevils for the family. That's as much detail as this app would show me because it's not as familiar with this particular species. So I'm just gonna record that over on a label. And if you click on the question mark button next to the camera in the app, you can get more tips for how to get better pictures. Open the shadow box art frame, place the beetle inside and close it up. You'll be able to see it from the front and the back. The casing helps other things from getting into it. 
You'll also want to keep it away from direct sunlight to preserve it the best. I hope you enjoy this up close learning with insects. Now go outside and observe what kind of insects come to the porch light at night or crawl on the trees and flowers where you live. Just remember, if you go out to catch and preserve more insects on your own, ident identify it first before you collect it. Keep exploring by reading books about bugs and even career paths for people who want to work with bugs. That word again was entomologist. You can find all these books and more in the library's collection. As they say, in the end, we only save what we love and we only love what we know and understand. So thanks for taking some time with me today to understand a little more about the world around us. We'll see you at the library.